Okay. So very welcome, Mr. Leier from Texas Instruments. Unfortunately, it's the last session for today, but I think it will be a very interesting session. Also, what we see at LinkedIn and all this presentation, because you will have also an interesting topic here for single pay Ethernet for, for the long reach files and some others, and also other very helpful and useful semiconductors. And that's why thanks for your time, thanks for being here. And I will hand over to you. You can start now and your, your presentation can start. Okay. Um, I need to share, let me see. Uh, it's already on the screen, so it works. It's Okay, it's on the screen. You can see it, back. you can hear it. Okay. Just see my complete video. Makes it smaller here. Take your time. Be okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Good afternoon or good morning if you're from from US. Uh, my name is Thomas Lyra. I'm part of the industrial systems team in TI Freising, Germany, and I work on industrial communication for the past ten years. And single pair Ethernet, uh, we are very excited to bring this into many different industrial applications. And today's talk is about uh, not just the 10 megabit version, but also 100 megabit, gigabit. Uh, also, when you put it in industrial applications, uh, related topics like power clocking, diagnostics, and higher layer processing. So the agenda here is uh, we start out with an overview of industrial control interfaces and how uh, single pair Ethernet maps into. Uh, what are the key requirements for single pair Ethernet in industrial? Um, giving long reach Ethernet applications, I think these two days you've seen a lot of use cases, so probably don't spend too much. Uh, there has been plenty of examples given. Then we go into the products for 10 megabit, 100 megabit, and gigabit. And then we go into these key requirements for industrial, looking at examples of the low power topic for the, the long 10 megabit uh, phi. Uh, discussions, we had discussions on, on APL, SPE, a difference here an example of a power design for APL devices. Then we go into diagnostics capability of the Ethernet physical layers. When you put single pair Ethernet into high performance applications, then it's also a matter of uh, chitter and latency and the clock design is then relevant uh, associated with single pair Ethernet. Uh, processing uh, of single pair Ethernet, which means the data pass, what, what do you put on the data, there's many options here. We have a brief look there. And I finished the presentation with a kind of a custom power solution. We heard about power over Ethernet, Poodle, uh, APL power, but you can also, if you have a closed system, you want to use single pair Ethernet, like in a ro robotics application, have daisy chain power over single pair Ethernet. So here is the I need to move that a little bit. Here is the landscape of interfaces in industrial control systems. And we, we map basically these interfaces uh, data rate over reach. So the discussion so far has been on uh, for process industry, process industry going 200 meters, 1000 meters, using uh, field buses, uh, 4 to 20 milliamps, or Profibus PA, very limited data rate. It's a point-to-point -point connection with power over the same cable. Now the trend clearly going to the T1L, APL, advanced physical layer, which has additional requirements on top of the uh, T1L to replace the long distance process automation communication. 
that's one. Two, uh, that's coming up and driven from the automotive industry, bus structures with CAN, where you have drops for uh, CAN nodes that will be replaced in the future with a multi-drop version T1S of the 802.3 CG standard. Three is 100 megabit, single pair Ethernet over 100 megabit. This standard is driven out of automotive with a reach of about 15 meters for unshielded twisted pair. We have customer who puts this physical layer into shielded cables, into motor cables, and then they get up to 100 meters of reach using the 100 megabit single pair Ethernet. So, and that addresses applications like encoders, which are RS485 based. Now you give motor position feedback, motor analytics, a boost in data rate uh, to get to 100 megabit. So that will uh, enhance motor analytics, motor position feedback. Then it doesn't stop at 100 megabit. We also have a gigabit single pair Ethernet. While there's a significant uh, improvement in, in the wires, you come from four pairs to a single pair. That's a significant improvement. Yes, it's not you not easily reach the 100 meters, typically 15 meters unshielded, 40 meters shielded. Uh, here we see applications like robotics, CNC machines, multi-carrier transport systems using the gigabit single pair Ethernet. And we also see the 100 megabit and gigabit with the capacitive coupling going into backplane applications. So it's not about reach, but it is about getting Ethernet down uh, to the IOs over backplanes uh, that you don't need a proprietary backplane communication. And you can continue a time sensitive network even at a gigabit rate to the backplane. So these are very interesting uh, use cases we see from customers of single pair Ethernet uh, going all uh, data rates and, and distances. So very excited about it also from a topology point of view. Some have point to point with power uh, on the back plane. Uh, you can also do like a, a line topology. In some areas you have ring topologies uh, with redundancy. Okay, now what are the key requirements to put single pair Ethernet in industrial applications? And there are various categories. Uh, of course, industrial environment is uh, harsh, right? Harsh in terms of uh, EMC, C, uh, electromagnetic disturbance, uh, electrostatic discharge. So there's a standard for uh, EMC compliance and ESD compliance. There's another standard for the mechanical and the physical variations, uh, a, a mechanical shock, a vibration, or a fast temperature variation. There is, when you put this in the explosive area, a standard for the intrinsic safety. Well, with certain requirements. So your application with single pair Ethernet need to comply with the industrial environment. Next, there is a performance requirement. Certain reach, yes, reach data rate we've seen on the previous chart, but uh, it's not about uh, uh, the absolute distance you could theoretically go. You also need to meet it uh, with a certain bit error rate, 10 to the minus nine, 10 to the minus 12. I need to see my lights going off. Um, it's important that you, you keep the robustness over reach. Uh, low latency, low jitter, when you put it into machine applications, robotics applications, uh, that's important. Low power consumption, of course, in the intrinsic safety area, or when you put it into a constraint a device, like a sensor with a small housing, or you have it motor attached, then power, high power means more heat, uh, which is then an issue 
when you attach a single pair Ethernet device to a motor. Availability in diagnostics, we talk about industrial use cases. So it's very good to detect line breaks, uh, especially when you have moving cables early on. You don't wait for a, a wire break. You should be able to predict it, to see it coming. So for this, you need diagnostics capabilities. Once you lose a connection, you, you need to have a fast link loss detection to react and go to a safe state in your application. So error handling can be at a physical layer, at a Mac layer, but also at an application layer. When you want to put single pair Ethernet in uh, the factory automation space where there is industrial Ethernet and we talk about TSN networks, it's about yeah, using these interfaces uh, for real-time Ethernet, which are today at 100 megabit uh, with MII interface uh, is here an important thing. When you do time sensitive network over single pair Ethernet, make sure your Ethernet phi doesn't eat into the preamble. So the synchronization area of an Ethernet uh, frame or prepended to an Ethernet frame, it's coded with TSN. So make sure uh, TSN can run over single pair Ethernet. And it's not always about uh, new connectors and new cables. Use it on existing cables and connectors is also of interest. Uh, last topic uh, was discussed many times during these two days, power options, right? If I want to use the same cable with power, there is of course power over Ethernet, there's power over data line, there is APL power which has a uh, few different parameters for the intrinsic safety application, but you could also do your custom power. Think about you do your own single pair Ethernet in a robot arm and you even power your motors uh, and your control and your position feedback over the same Ethernet cables. And it's kind of custom daisy chained power. Long reach Ethernet applications, uh, very quickly, because you've seen all these applications in previous presentations in process automation. So these are the field transmitters in building automation, different end equipments uh, where 1000 meter or more. Um, I think you heard it before, the physical layer from TI goes up to 1700 meters, which may be a benefit for large buildings here. In factory automation, to some extent, when you do kind of environmental control, um, I don't see the direct replacement, for example, for an IO link communication uh, that still has its uh, own value being very low power, small and shorter distance as a T1L is not a, an immediate replacement for that. So here are the products, uh, Ethernet files from Texas Instruments for the industrial world. We split it into standard Ethernet and single pair Ethernet. On standard Ethernet, our best product for real-time applications for the EtherCut and Profinet in factory automation and motor drives is the DP83826. It has the MI interface. It has very low latency and jitter which makes it perfect for uh, high speed and also high precision applications. On gigabit, it is a DP83869, which uses the RGMII and it supports like TSN, time sensitive network at a gigabit rate, but it can also run the 100 megabit protocols over the MII interface. On single pair ethernet, we have already in production, the 100 megabit version, 83TC811, that's a 100 base T1 Ethernet file with uh, a lot of options on MII interfaces. It has low latency, it has long cable reach, as I mentioned in a uh, shielded, with a shield, shielded cable goes up to 100 meter. We do have the gigabit, a single pair Ethernet file, which is pin to pin compatible with the 100 megabit version. 
and that's in pre-production stage but samples and EVMs are already available and for the process industry and what was discussed in many sessions here is the T1L, the 10 megabit, uh, which fits the APL requirements. It has uh, various uh, MII options. It is low power and it is long cable reach. The temperature up to 105 degrees for the 10 megabit T1L, up to 125 degrees for the 100 megabit and the gigabit. Looking at it one by one, um, so the 10 megabit, now we start with the uh, slowest, um, has very low power consumption in a five by five millimeter package. It supports a 2.4 and one volt peak to peak uh, up to 1,700 meters. Uh, it has a robustness, uh, for ESD and EMC, it's high temperature, and it has a lot of diagnostics features. And these diagnostics features we are reviewing in more details after the product overview. Um, what else to mention? Yes, there is an MII interface and an RMII, typically running 25 and 50 megahertz. There's also a low power mode where this interface can run with five megahertz. Of course, you configure the file with the MDIO. There are interrupts in case there is one of these diagnostic monitors uh, reaching a limit, and you can generate an interrupt to your host CPU. Uh, there are various options of supplying this chip. Uh, analog and, and digital power supply can vary from 1 volt, 1.8 volts, 3.3 volts. The 100 megabit single pair Ethernet Phi DP83TC811. Uh, you already see the Q1, which tells you it's coming from automotive. Automotive qualified, uh, has a good reach with unshielded twisted pair and even more on shielded uh, twisted pair. Uh, it has, in addition to MII, RMII, even SGMII interface. It's very good in, in latency and in power consumption. It's robust in terms of EMC, uh, EMI, and ESD compliance. It has set diagnostics. Uh, it comes in a small package. It's a wet evil flank package where you can have visual inspection. Looks like more an uh, automotive requirement here. And it goes up to 125C. And when you attach it to motors for uh, motor analytics and position feedbacks, that's uh, quite interesting. Yeah, benefits, I think most of it we talked about. It's a gigabit phi. DP83TG720, also from coming from automotive, is pin to pin compatible. Uh, power consumption, right? So the, the 10 megabit phi is in the 50 milliwatt range. The gigabit phi is 10 times higher. You get 100 times more data rate uh, for a 10 times more power, but still um, quite good active power numbers here for gigabit communication over a single twisted pair. Um, yes, Open Alliance compliance. This is a test spec from the Open Alliance. Uh, it puts in requirements that you measure the SNR of your channel and you can monitor it during an active link. Uh, the MII, now you go gigabit, you go very high speed. You can even control your slew rate to your host, to your Mac interface. Um, as I said, the industrial applications of that is backplane, machine tools, CNC machines, multi-carrier transport systems. All right, anything else? So it's the same, there's an MRI, there's an interrupt, there's a control. Uh, there is a uh, different options for the power supply. An overview, here are all the uh, 
yeah, links on ti.com for the 10 megabit, 100 megabit and gigabit single pair ethernet, the data sheets, the evaluation modules are available, and then a lot of additional app nodes and reference designs and webinars uh, about single pair ethernet. And of course, you get development support, and there's a lot of information on ti.com to start your single pair Ethernet design today. Now, I want to go into some of the key requirements for the industrial application. The first one I pick is the power consumption of the T1L or the Phi, which we use also for intrinsic safety for APL. So you see here when you power uh, the analog supply different, whether it's 3.3 volt, 1.8 volt or 1 volt, you get then different power consumption numbers. The lowest mode we have here measured is 45 milliwatts. So you have about 500 milliwatts for your complete APL device. The physical layer takes less than 10% offset uh, power budget. Power design for the APL field device. So here you, you have your uh, CDN, your coupling, decoupling network. So when you get power and data in uh, over like a 200 meter spur, uh, you, you separate out power and data. And power has a certain requirement. You need to have a constant power uh, consumption or current consumption. And for this, we, we have developed in the systems team here in Verizing a power solution for APL devices. And what's special about this power design is, first of all, uh, the um, POL reg point of load regulators. Uh, they are very efficient. They are above 90% efficiency uh, for the 1.8 and 3.3 volts. Plus, they have a very low thermal package resistance, which is a key requirement for intrinsic safety. Then, uh, to ensure constant power consumption, we use an e fuse and a power shunt regulator. The system uh, voltage, so here an example of sift, uh, up to 17 volt input voltage is translated to a 3.3 voltage. Uh, and it's this device, uh, the LMZ uh, device has a very, very low thermal junction ambient uh, resistor of 14 Kelvin per watt. And uh, the Last part here is an LM3881, which uh, defines your power up sequence to come, yeah, to to control all this uh, power components. So that's uh, what you need when you design an APL field device. You, you need to have the right power design, and these are the right components and an example of components to be used for APL power. Diagnostics. So all these files have diagnostics capability. Here's a list from the 100 megabit uh, single pair Ethernet file. There is an, an ESD sensor. There is an online quality monitor. There is a link, uh, yeah, link detection. So when you have, uh, you, you basically measure whether the wire has a short or an open and, and where uh the wire is open that's when the link uh, goes down there is a temperature sensor voltage sensor bit error rate tester and and loopback modes so going into these diagnostics uh, a little bit more detail esd uh, general issue devices get smaller which uh, then there are more uh, sensitive to to esd um, and the problem is, what if you could determine the exact moment an ESD event occurred uh, and I identify on what pins ESD uh, event reached? So we have added ESD sensors on the MII interface. 
and on the MDI interface to detect, detect any level and count the number of ESD events, generate an interrupt to the host, but also keep the counters even after a device reset. So ESD counters and sensors is an enhanced diagnostic feature here. Then uh, the cable uh, diagnostics feature, signal quality indication. So that's a nine bit uh, SNR measurement of your link quality. And you can see once the link drops below 30 dB or once your signal quality drops below 30 dB, then you will lose the link. So you can continuously monitor the quality and if you see it going down and coming close to the threshold where you drop the link, uh, that's what you can use for predictive maintenance and say, well, before I, I get a fall below 30, I indicate a pre-warning, now the link uh, will go down and I go into a safe state of my application. Uh, that is done every 15 milliseconds with an active link. Uh, when the link goes down, then you can do this time domain reflectometry. So 8-bit of resolution to measure your, your signal pass and to find out at what length you have a cable break to detect whether there's an open or a short on, on the wire. Additional diagnostic features, uh, over temperature sensor, wide range, programmable with a trigger for an interrupt, over voltage sensor, uh, also wide range and uh, with interrupt, a pseudo random number bit sequence checker and generator, so to do a bit of error rate test without or in the field when you deploy it. Um, and it has a seven bit error lock. And then various loopbacks at the analog interface, at the MRI interface, or internal digital loopback. So these are quite uh, comprehensive diagnostic tool sets with the Ethernet physical layer to make it, yeah, to, to operate it in an industrial environment, an industrial environment where you also have uh, functional safety requirements and you want to do predictive maintenance. Switching topic, uh, single pair Ethernet, when you put it into more high performance applications where time synchronization over Ethernet matters, also the time synchronization to the application. So uh, when I talk about EtherCAT ProfiNet time sensitive network, uh, time synchronization is a key parameter. And time synchronization is also a matter of how you do your clock design. In general, we have three clock domains when we have a daisy chained application with single pair Ethernet. So here's a 100 megabit or gigabit Ethernet PHY connected to a TI Citara processor, which has an industrial communication subsystem for gigabit to do real time Ethernet of any sort, whether it's uh, EtherCAT, a ProfiNet, or Gigabit TSN. So three time domains. Time domain one is the received clock from the previous device. There's a received PLL here, which gets you an RX clock. The second one is the TX clock of an Ethernet PHY, which comes from the clock input to the PHY. And the third one is then the processing, if you bridge the data with a real-time Ethernet, then uh, that SOC has its own clock domain. So to minimize the jitter in the system, you can combine clock domains. For example, the Ethernet transmit and the Ethernet bridge function, the real-time Ethernet bridge function, clock it from the same clock source, which could be the SOC clock or from a single 25 megahertz oscillator, which feeds the Ethernet physical layer and the ARM SOC. You could even further enhance it, three domains, receive clock, transmit clock, 
from se uh, separate clock source and bridge or Ethernet switch clock now combines the clocks using a single clock source for the SOC clock and the Ethernet Phi clock. And then you could also do what's uh, known from telecom and called Sync Ethernet. You use the recovered receipt clock, you feed it into a, a chitter cleaner device, like uh, here's two examples. And then you feed the transmit phi and the ARM SOC from the receive clock. And that gives you maximum performance in terms of uh, chitter over a network. So here we talk about not a point-to-point -point connection, but a daisy chain or a ring connection with single pair Ethernet. Okay. Now, single pair Ethernet on constraint devices. What's a constraint device? So it's a device which has a small form factor or a power requirements like in the APL application, a 500 milliwatt. Uh, there's a lot of protocol options. You, we could think of. So you could, if you use uh, it in a, in a closed system in a point to coin point connection, you could just put raw IO data over Ethernet. And if you are the owner of both sides, uh, you know you can define your own format, your own protocol, basically. When you talk about uh, field bus protocols, hard foundation field bus, profi bus PA, you can tunnel these protocols over the Ethernet frame. Uh, there's also an initiative and a project to transport IO link over single pair Ethernet. Then when you go industrial Ethernet protocols, yes, you can do the um, Ethernet IP, Profinet, OPCUA, hard IP, TSN, over uh, Ethernet. So that's using kind of the infrastructure of a um, control system from a, from a Siemens, from a Rockwell, uh, from big automation players. In the future, you also need to think about security, right? It's, uh, yes, we'd say Ethernet goes everywhere in the factory or also in buildings, but that also means uh, it's, it's a security risk and security added to uh, the industrial Ethernet or to any of these other uh, tunnels and protocols is an important aspect. Which of course then tells you, well, on a constraint device, if I need to run a security network stack, an industrial Ethernet protocol, maybe a web server, a file transfer, um, you you easily run out of the power budget or the space. So you need uh, microcontrollers which are quite powerful, have a lot of memory, still uh, fit in the constraints of, of power consumption and of the space available in that constraint device. My last slide here, jumping to another topic, the daisy chain power. So we heard about Poodle and yeah, power is always a problem on my side here. <laughs> uh, so we, we heard about power over Ethernet, power over data line, uh, APL power. Here is another proposal when you use a single pair Ethernet uh, and do daisy chain power. So the, also the Ethernet communication is daisy chain. Think about a robotics application, a robot arm, six axis, six daisy chain, single pair Ethernet, where you also have power over the same single pair and you have it daisy chained. So here's a, an application proposal. It's not easily, cannot easily see it, but it's available. No. What's happening here? Hmm. We, we can see it, it's okay. You can see it? No. Yeah, we see the present uh, the presenter mode, but it's okay. 
no, I want to switch back. So back. Uh, for the 100 megabit phi, the 100 megabit phi separates power and data. So you can do this uh, daisy chain power and we have uh, developed it for a application where we think about up to 10 nodes with 48 volts. So some of this Collaborative robots uh, work with 48 volts, 4.5 ampere, and you daisy chain up to 10 nodes or axes um, in, a, in a robot arm. Still with uh, robustness in terms of bit error rate and robustness in terms of ESD and EMC compliance. So that uh, TI design is online and gives you an idea uh, how to use single pair Ethernet in robotics application with power, daisy chain power. And with that, I'm at the end of my presentation. So sorry for the interruption, but I, I hope you, you could still uh, stay to the end and thank you. So I'm also back. Thanks a lot for this many details and, and the, the few insight, the whole product range coming up from TI. So for me, it mm -hmm. was very impressive because you show up more or less high configurations for all three major speeds. And also here in the audience, uh, some persons are, have some additional question because uh, compared to the standard also for 10 base T1L and 100 base T1, you show up uh, where you can reach longer reach when an defined in in the standard and uh, for example one question is for the 100 base c1 file do you specify the possible distance with a shielded piece of pair cable is this cable uh, specified in a in a special way or what is the reference for for the cable okay. here one person <clears throat> yeah. so we don't have a spec for it but we 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 use a motor cable, a motor with motor feedback wires in it. Today, this motor feedback wires are two wires typically used for a protocol called Hyperface DSL. So the same motor cable with two wires for motor feedback we are using as an example. But we are not putting out a specification. I think every uh, customer, customer use case uh, with the 100 megabit in industrial has its own cable in mind. Mm. So uh, TI is not playing here a role in defining that cable. We can give examples. Here is an example. This, uh, with this motor cable, we are getting up to 100 meter. So if we look to the cable standard we discussed during the last two days, also there are more or less two groups of cables for single pair Ethernet in specification. One is the cable specification standard for one gig. So if this I think this will be definitely good enough, uh, more than good enough also for 100 base T1 if this is used. It's also shielded cable and it should work. Mm -hmm. I have also another question. Uh, the T1, uh, the 10 base T1L standard says it's at least 1000 meter should be the, the reach. Of course, yeah. so what we hear, most of the files are supporting more. And uh, the good thing is also here, the colleagues from Analog are still in the line. Um, if TI supports now 1,700 meter uh, at one side, so you have device with, with your FI and the other side, it will be, for example, a switch with the Analog FI. Did it work together? Um, I think we can also discuss it together mm -hmm. with Analog, but it's, um, I think it's an important question for customers that we have the standards and the, the devices should work together. Or is when a shorter reach only possible? Well, the assumption just from the discussion is that you at least reach the, the minimum out of two, which would be 1200 meters. But I'm sure you need to test it. There needs to be interrupt tests to see mm. what the maximum reach of both components are. Because and they are from different been, vendors. It would so be nice why, to why make some... Richter from Arnold Devices, if you can still hear me. Yes. So I, I I'd like to, from, I'd like to comment, I'd like to comment on that, that the reach is, 
it's not as simple, uh, you know, if you put two files, whether from one vendor or from two vendors, on two sides of a very good cable in a laboratory, yes, it can go for over a very long distance. But then in the real life, when you have all the components between the file and the cable, if you have to protect it against industrial noise and the cable is not ideal and you have uh, maybe interconnections between the cables, uh, it's, I, I think the diagnostics that all the five vendors will uh, enable, they would let you know if the cable is, you know, what's the signal to noise ratio and then depending on that you will assess the link quality. I don't think the reach is just a single vector uh, performance. If we look from a customer point of view and make it, should it make sense to have an interoperability test, what we, for example, can support from the network point of view with, with cable installations or test material? what you yeah, think about makes, this idea makes absolutely sense i think um, to to have kind of a combined effort with um, yeah certain connector certain cable and putting the two files available on the market today on kind of a reach test here uh, i expect some of the customers already doing it Mm -hmm. Okay. But make it more publicly available. Uh, I think that would be of general interest. So we in analog I mean, devices look forward to whenever we can get to a plug fest, and that's I think is, is where we can demonstrate this interoperability. But ultimately, the value of Ethernet connectivity is that it's a standard. The standard calls yeah. out one kilometer. All yeah. semiconductor vendors for ten-base TNL must support one kilometer. That guarantees interoperability, as does all of our engagements with the University of New Hampshire, who do interoperability testing for IEEE 2.3. So ADI certainly will engage there. I expect other semiconductor vendors for physical layer technology will also engage with the University of New Hampshire for interoperability testing, because ultimately customers expect these things to work together. And we as ADI, and I'm sure all the semiconductor partners, we all are working ultimately with that goal. Definitely, yes, yeah. Um, I have another question. I, uh, this goes definitely to TI. Is, uh, here's some cu uh, customers asking, and I think you show something about it. Do the 100 megabit SPE also work for EFACAT or Profinet? I think it's related to the yeah, low latency, what you also show up. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. sum up this point for the customer? Yeah, so I think in, in general, the, the latency of the 100 megabit file, I think, is in the range of four, 500 nanoseconds. Uh, RXTX latency combined, which is still in range compared to 100 megabit TX, where you see around 250, 300 nanoseconds. So it's in the same ballpark numbers. Uh, but what's not supported today is uh, official FI support for 100 megabit single pair Ethernet from the EtherCAD technology group. Yeah. Right, so you, you kind of would be on your own to do that for a closed application. Yes, I think so. Even the the PNO uh, Profibus organization, Profinet organization, uh, haven't defined the 100 megabit uh, single pair Ethernet mount type today. Yeah, which maybe couldn't can be done. Um, we need to see, but certainly uh, the benefit is clearly there of a uh, single pair Ethernet in factory uh, in in drive applications where you have. Uh, less cable or moving cables uh, in CNC applications. So the benefit uh, using single pair Ethernet there is certainly given. Uh, it's up to the field bus organizations uh, to pick up the 100 megabit single pair Ethernet. Yeah, the field bus organizations looking on single pair Ethernet and start to evaluate and discussing, and this, but this process is not finished. And they're working on ideas and concepts and use cases how to adapt single pair Ethernet to his yeah 
solution landscapes and physical layers. Thanks for mm -hmm. this comment. Uh, here's another comment. I think it could be some customer who wants to create his first device. And he asked an additional question. What kind of microcontroller do you recommend for SPE device? So can be its relationship between the MII, RGMI, and what is the right microcontroller for, for this? Do we have also recommendation for this? Yeah, I've shown like three different uh, speeds, right? A gigabit mm -hmm. uh, single pair Ethernet, uh, probably needs a more needs a microcontroller which can talk RGMII. So here for 100 megabit and and the gigabit single pair Ethernet we have a perfect fit from Citara devices, Citara embedded processors from TI, which have the industrial communication subsystem in for like TSN, EtherCAT, Proofinet, supports multi protocol. Oh, that's a good fit. When it comes to the APL device, like a 500 milliwatt budget Ethernet microcontroller, uh, and then you want to add a lot of networking service to it, I think that's where there is still very limited uh, microcontrollers on the market who can uh, have the rich feature set uh, with Ethernet uh, in a very small power and form factor. So from a TI perspective, yes, we have an, an MSP 430E, which is a microcontroller ARM Cortex M4 with Ethernet, uh, but it, it's more on the upper bound of uh, the power budget. Okay, thanks for this answer. And it sounds like um, the same what I offer for the other presenters. Um, if anybody wants to have more support, please go directly to to the company who present and you get more information on these websites. One question is it's also general in nature. I can also answer a little bit. Many times the question come up here in the in the event and also in customer visits, where the customer is asking, um, normally for standard Ethernet, you have a FI and it supports all the speeds from gigabit uh, up to 10 megabit. And unfortunately, this is not the case coming from the protocols and from IEEE, this is not supported. And I remember, though so I was part of this standardization process, at the beginning, single pay Ethernet was mostly focused to automotive only. And for the car industry, they always pointed out auto negotiation is not needed. We can put it out to save costs inside the cars. So this is a disadvantage we have today with with single pay Ethernet, so that different files support one speed, so you have to decide what you want to use. It could be changed in the future, but uh, it is like it is today. Nevertheless, we see it today in the morning that many applications are uh, possible with the technology we have today. And more or less, this brings me to a sum up for the whole two days. Um, first of all, I sense. Say, say thanks to all the presenters. It was a lot of work to prepare everything. Also to my colleagues here sitting in the room who makes the technical support and all these things make it happen to, to have these two days. And the feedback we got also already from some of the customers. We have some very technical information here, big statements, how the technology wants to influence um, industrial applications. We had the chance to look in the infrastructure from cables and connectors up to how to bring everything together. We see a lot of applications, what is possible. And uh, thanks also to the strong support from the semiconductor industry and from, from Word Electronics, we get also many detailed information about the files and so on. This will be continued. Uh, I see it was a good recommendation what we can do in the future. Uh, we, we definitely this kind of uh, webinars and events will be continue. We will come up with more sessions in the future. If anybody has a topic was was not touched today and there is some question open, also here you can contact, contact us. This will be also have an influence to our new planning. And one point at the end come up with the compatibility of different file vendors and so on. And the, nice word is was on the table plug fest 
I think this could be a nice event for the next year when we bring together the first users with the devices and the semiconductor to uh, hopefully face-to-face -face event, a kind of plug fest would be a nice idea for, for 2021. And this will be also my last comment for today. Thanks, and we will see us and we all will stay in contact to make it real, to have single pair Ethernet as a future technology for IoT and IIoT for the industrial applications. So thanks to all up to here, and we will continue this work. And also what I want to parent out only together over the borders of the different vendors and suppliers, uh, only together we can make this vision real. And I feel and see that it's working and the cooperation is very great. Also besides also some competition we will have in all these different fields, but together we will manage it to bring this technology to the streets. So these are the last words from my side. Thanks to all who attended, who present, and we will see us very soon. And thanks, have a good day, stay healthy, and take care for you and your families and friends. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.